Hey everybody! Welcome back! Shout outs to all the Earth Club kids who helped with the Unplug It Before Vacation! Special mention to Dua, Zoya, Sapria, IJ, and Elizabeth! Thank you so much for caring! And shout outs to all the AP Physics kids for working so hard at the hardest course in the USA! It's a brand new year, we got to let go of fear, we got to be much freer in pursuing our career! Which is being here, right now. Together we can learn how. We can, we can begin by tuning in to the light within and honoring all beings. Here's how. Shine the light. Keep doing right. Shine the light. All right. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Joshua Barclay, aka JB Free, and we are here to discuss the beginning of the second semester of AP Physics C, or the beginning of AP Physics 2, electric fields. And you may be saying, hey JB, why are you wearing a gravity t-shirt? Well, it's because there are so many similarities between electric fields and gravity. Really, the only difference is, um, uh, for the main equation, this instead of G, we have a K here. Instead of the gravitational constant, we have Coulomb's constant. And instead of masses, which produce a gravitational field, we'll have charge 1 and charge 2 here. Uh, so there's a great deal of uh, similarity between electric fields and gravitational fields. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, properties of electric charge. So electric charges, as you probably know, are positive or negative and like charges or systems repel, and unlike charges uh, or systems attract. Now the AP Physics uh, 2 folks and the AP Physics 1 folks are really into understanding the difference between a system and an object. Uh, a system can just be defined as any group of objects that have some kind of internal structure. Uh, for example, just a, a conductor, a, a conducting sphere, could be considered a system because it's got electrons and protons, and the electrons can move all around, and they have uh, they interact within the object itself, So, or really the system. So we can call that a system. I, I kind of use uh, object sometimes and system sometimes, uh, but keep in mind that even just a conducting sphere can be considered a system um, because there's moving parts in it like electrons and uh, other protons that are stuck in the nucleus they don't move around. Um, charge objects or system can attract neutral systems. You may not realize this but they can do that by changing the distribution of charge inside the system. For example, here I'm going to charge this balloon. This wall behind me is neutral. The wall is neutral, but this charged balloon can attract it. And I don't know if you can see that right there, but it's attracting. So uh, that is because different individual charges in, in the wall are moving around. We'll talk more about that later. Now, charge is conserved. Uh, you can't destroy or create charge. You can transfer it, but you cannot destroy it. Um, or create it for that matter. Now the smallest isolatable unit of charge is the electron charge. Uh, we use the symbol E for that. It's also called the elementary charge. Um, uh, and this is indivisible. 
uh, Millikan's oil drops, uh, when he did this experiment trying to discover the uh, what these little pieces of charge inside the atom were, uh, he charged up a bunch of oil drops and put them in an electric field, and he found out by doing just a quick uh, calculation versus their, uh, their force of gravity versus the electric force on them, uh, he found out that they were always charged with a multiple of E. They were always charged 1E, e, 2E, e, 3E, e, 4E, 5E, uh, never half or a third of E, never a fraction of E. So we find that this elementary charge E is the smallest uh, isolatable charge. Uh, the charge of the proton is just that, the elementary charge. The charge of the electron is uh, the same thing, same magnitude, but it's negative. In fact, we use the symbol E for electron. Sometimes we'll use the symbol E with a superscript negative sign. So what else do we have here? Uh, we have electrons are considered fundamental particles. They cannot be broken up into parts. Uh, in contrast, protons and neutrons, they are, you can break them up. They're made of quarks. Now, quarks actually have a charge of a fraction of E. Uh, they'll, they're either charged two-thirds E or one-third E or positive or negative, but they're never observed in isolation. So the smallest uh, isolatable charge that we're going to observe is the elementary charge. Uh, the SI unit of charge is the Coulomb. And actually the Coulomb uh, was identified uh, as uh, before we even knew that electrons existed. Uh, so a Coulomb is a huge amount of charge, 6.24 times 10 to the 18 elementary charges. That's about 6 billion billion elementary charges. Uh, also, you can also, of course, say that um, one elementary charge is a number of coulombs, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs is one elementary charge. Now, uh, when you're looking at neutral macroscopic objects, objects that we can see with our eyes, uh, or systems, they have equal amounts of positive and negative charge in them. That's what makes them neutral. Uh, now, you can have elementary particles that are neutral. For example, photons and neutrinos those are neutral, and these don't have any constituent parts. But all of our macroscopic objects, objects we can see with our eyes, they have just an equal number of positive and negative charges in them. If you've got a negatively charged object, uh, a macroscopic object, that means it's got an excess of negative charges, i.e. it's got too many electrons as compared to the positive charges, which are protons. It's got more electrons than it does protons. And those excess electrons are always kept in the outer orbitals of the atoms. Now a positively charged macroscopic object or system, it has not an excess of positive charges, it has a shortage of negative charges. Electrons have been ripped out of those outer shells. Uh, so there are fewer electrons than protons. The reason I'm stressing that is because only electrons, uh, for the most part, can actually move. Uh, we'll see some exceptions to that in a few minutes. Now, um, if you have a charged object, that is because charge has been transferred to it. There are three methods of charging that we will discuss in just uh, the next video.